Well, today we're going to start a new series that I'm really excited about. It's called Survival Guide for Parents. And what we're going to be doing in this series is we're going to be helping parents with three basic principles that will help you to survive. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen the show Survivor, if it's still running. I don't know it's how many, it's in the 50th season or whatever. One of those original sort of reality TV shows. It went, the first time I watched that show, you know, I was kind of drawn into it like everyone else because it was new and exciting because in all the promos, you're expecting that these, that these people, these real life people, they weren't just actors, that they were going to struggle to survive. And I watched that show first season and the second season and the third season. And by then I was disappointed because everybody had survived. You know, I mean, it's almost like you, you think that the show is going to be, you know, gory and somebody's going to die. And oh no, you know, no one ever died. In all the years I watched that show, no one ever died. It turns out that that show wasn't really about surviving. It was about winning that game, right? So it wasn't really about survival. In this series, to be completely fair with you, this series isn't really about survival either. We're really not going to just tell you how to survive as a parent. We don't, our goal isn't just to get you to the end of, you know, when your kids finally get kicked out of the house and you've survived it and they've miraculously survived it. We want to do better than that. We want you to actually win as a parent. We don't want you to just survive. We want you to win. And we think that these principles, that these three principles over these next three weeks will give you the basics for really winning as a parent. Now, there's more to parenting than these three things, obviously, but we think that if you take the, this as sort of a framework for your parenting, then it could totally affect the way you parent, whether you're talking about little kids or whether you're talking about teenagers or even beyond that. We think these principles are going to be really important for you, so I hope you're excited about this just like I am. Now, they'll let anyone parent these days, and they're really uh, there really isn't a training manual for it. You know, I mean, if, if I wanted to go have brain surgery, I know that the person who's, having, who's performing surgery on me is qualified and has been to school for it and knows exactly what he's doing. I mean, he better be, right? But it's crazy. As important as parenting is, as important or more important than surgery, they'll let anyone do it, won't they? I mean, anyone can be a parent and so we want to make sure that you get training for it. We want to make sure that, that you are equipped to do it well, whether you're just starting out or whether you've been a parent for a while. I think that this could be really helpful. Now, if you're, if you're here today and you're not a parent, I encourage you, there's a lot here for you because these principles are still powerful and valuable. Maybe you'll be a parent in the future. Maybe this will be something that you use for your future grandkids or for someone else that you're helping out. But I just want to encourage you to pay attention, to get ready to learn from God and from his word as we get into the survival guide for parents. All right, now before we explain the first principle, the first of our three principles, uh, I want to bring you to our text for today, for today's message. It's from Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, and I want to make sure that you understand the backstory uh, to this passage and how it relates to us and to parenting, because it's actually really insightful. It's really good for us to understand this. So here's the story. Here's the situation. You know, the Israelites, the people of God in the Old Testament, um, they were rescued by God from Egypt, where they were in slavery, and God told them he was going to bring them to the promised land, the land that he had promised to their forefather, Abraham, and God rose up this guy named Moses to deliver them, to bring them out of Egypt. But Moses brought them out of Egypt and on their way through the desert to the promised land. And that, that serves as a great image for us as we're going through this parenting series that maybe some of you parents feel like you're going through the desert of parenting. You know, parenting is hard. It doesn't matter if you're changing diapers. That was kind of a hard time for me, uh, even though my wife would say she did most of the changing of the diapers. But, but parenting is hard then. It's kind of stinky. And then it, gets, it doesn't get any easier when they become toddlers. And it really doesn't get a whole lot easier as they get into grade school. And by the time they're teenagers, 
you better be ready, you better be equipped, you better know what you're doing. Any, any time at all, all throughout that parenting journey, just like the Israelites' journey through the desert, you might feel like you're in the desert. You might feel like this is hard, this is challenging, this is difficult. But listen, I want to encourage you that the promised land awaits you. The promised land of healthy, godly, great kids is really out there for you if you will if you'll do what God says in his word if you'll pay attention to some of these basic principles in fact Deuteronomy chapter 1 opens up i love this because it's after it's after Moses had brought the Israelites out of of Egypt and they're standing on the edge of the promised land but if you if you're not familiar with the story you need to know this they got to the edge of the promised land 40 years after they left Egypt. A whole generation had passed, and there were a lot of reasons for that, but, but they weren't supposed to take that long to get the, to the promised land. And maybe you feel like that as a parent. I'm not supposed to take this long. In fact, look what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 1. I love this. It's kind of like smack talk. It says, normally it takes only 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea, going by way of Mount Seir. But 40 years after the Israelites left Egypt, they finally got there. I mean, what, what a great passage that is. I don't know if you've ever noticed that before. Normally, it only takes 11 days, but it took them 40 years. I wonder if God looks down at us and says, parenting isn't really that hard. Sometimes we can complicate it and turn it into something that takes longer uh, than it should. I don't know about you, but I don't want my kids living in my home with me in 40 years, okay? That's not the desert of parenting that I want. I want to raise them well, and then I want to release them at the proper time, and I think we can do that. You can as well if we pay attention to these principles. Okay, so let's get to it. Here's parenting principle number one. It's just simply this. Put God first, Now, that's what Moses is going to explain to them. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, he gives them the Ten Commandments, and then Deuteronomy chapter, or he reminds them of the Ten Commandments, and then in Deuteronomy chapter 6 now, he stands in front of the people as they're about ready to enter into the promised land, the land that God had promised to them that was a long time coming, and he's peering into the promised land with the people of Israel, and this is what he says to them. He says, These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. You must obey them in the land that you're about to enter. And you and your children and your grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. Life. So see what Moses is telling, and and notice what he's saying to them. He's telling, he's speaking to parents and grandparents. He said, teach these commands to your kids and to your grandkids. What he's saying to them is, put God first. Live a God-centered life. Live a life, have a family that is God-centered. Make sure that if you put God first, if you get your priorities in line, then you will have a well-ordered life. You will have a well-ordered family. And we, we call this around here a biblical worldview. Parents, if we can teach our kids how to have a biblical worldview, then they'll have the ability, they'll have the foundation for living the rest of their lives in a way that honors God and that is successful. And we'll be able to raise kids who are great. And this is what Moses is telling the Israelites in that passage. He's saying, you need to put God first. Now, I understand if you're listening to this today and you're not a Christian, maybe you're here and you're, you're, uh, you're for whatever reason, you're investigating this. Maybe you, you've come to church because of this particular series. But listen, if you're not a Christian, then this whole thing, this whole first principle is blown. You obviously can't put God first if you don't know who God is, if you're not in a relationship with God, if you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ. We've got a series in our library called Foundations. Make sure that you take that so that you can do this first thing. Because if you don't do this first thing, in my opinion, in God's opinion, according to God's word, you can't have the building blocks, the basic building blocks for raising your kids well. If you don't have a biblical worldview, if you don't have the proper mindset 
you know, the proper building blocks in place, then, then it's a lost cause. You're gonna, you potentially are going to be in the desert a long, long time. So I really encourage you, if you're here and if you're not a follower of Jesus, put God first. Trust in Jesus. Learn about him. Take that foundations course. And then you will be surprised at how incredibly equipped you're going to be uh, to be a better parent because you'll be able to do this first principle, which is to put God first. Here's the second thing we need to understand. Parents then need to model a pursuit of God in their own lives. This is, this is really what, what Moses is getting at. I mean, he's talking to the whole nation. Kids are there too, but they're probably not paying attention. Just like the kids might not be paying attention who are in the service today, that's fine. But, but Moses was speaking to the parents and to the grandparents. Moses was saying, listen, you have to model this. You have to put God first. You can't just say to your kids, hey, you do these things and, uh, and I'm going to do something else. You need to be truly a pursuer of God. You need to be the kind of person that puts God first in your life. Look at how Moses said it in verse 5. He says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. See, what he's doing is saying, you have to do this first. I mean, Moses, in essence, is coining this phrase, maybe you've heard before, practice what you preach. You know, practice what you preach. Don't say one thing and do another. I know some parents, I know some people that say, they laugh about it. They, they say, oh, I tell my kids, don't cuss, don't, whatever. And then they're cussing at home. How, how are your kids going to learn not to cuss if you're doing that at home? They tell their kids, don't do this, don't do, you know, be careful with what you watch. And then they watch junk. You know, if you're not doing what this first principle is saying, putting God first, then there's no way your kids will. In fact, in, in the kids' survival guide and in the youth survival guide, for, for every age group, this is the very first principle for survival. Put God first. Get your priorities right. Make sure God is at the center. Parents, you have to lead in this. Your kids aren't going to do this if you don't do this. There's no way that you can just tell them to do something that you yourself aren't modeling. So parents, take this challenge. Put God first in your own life. I mean, you might have to think a little bit about that. Am I putting God first? Do I put God first in my finances? You know, for parents that aren't ever givers, if you're a follower of Jesus and you're not a giver to the local church, I think you're really messing up your kids because you're telling your kids to put God first, to seek him first, but then you're not prioritizing it in your giving. And so your kids are going to notice that and your kids aren't going to prioritize that in their giving when they grow up. And your kids are never going to learn that. And Jesus himself said that where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So what he's saying is your heart follows your treasure. He's saying wherever your priorities are, it's going to show up in your checkbook. And then if it shows up in your checkbook, it's going to eventually reveal itself in your life. So parents, this is just one example. But if you're not a giver, I think you're doing your kids a great disservice, not just to mention the kingdom of God, but you're doing your kids a great disservice because you're not really practicing what you preach if you're a follower of Jesus. Be a giver. That's just one example. There are a lot of others. But here's the point. God should be the top priority in the home. You know, there are so many parents that put so much emphasis and energy and time and money into sports, and that's great. I mean, my kids, they play sports. We invest in their sports. We want them to give 100% in their sports. They're in competitive sports. They play sports at school. That's great. I think sports are awesome. My dad encouraged me to play sports to keep me off the streets. I think it was a great idea. But so many parents put so much into sports, and they don't give any thought to teaching their kids spiritual things. So many parents put so much into academics. And again, academics are wonderful. Uh, parents, I think we should teach our kids to give it their all. It really bugs me. Kids, listen to this. Students, listen to this. It really bugs me. I used to be a high school teacher in the public school system. It bugs me when kids come into school that are Christians, followers of Jesus, and they blow off their studies. They give it their second effort or their third effort. I think that's terrible. I think that's a terrible witness. Kids, 
Students, you should do everything you can to be good in, in school. Give it your best, 100% effort. Parents, you should help your kids. You should prioritize you know, academics. Make sure that they understand the importance of academics. Help them with their homework. All of that is part of good parenting. But listen, don't put it above God. Parents, if you spend hours helping your kids with math, and math is great, if you spend hours helping them with math, do you spend any time at all helping them with God? I mean, this should probably convict you. This is a convicting thought for me, you know, to think, man, it, just like the money thing, how do I do with parenting? My wife and I, do we, do we just invest in their sports and in their academics or for some people in the clothes that they wear or invest all kinds of money in their entertainment and, and yet we're not really investing in their pursuit of God? It's so critical, parents, for us to make God the top priority in the home. Look at what Moses said about it. Deuteronomy 6, verse 7, he says, Repeat these things that I've taught you again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. See, I love this passage. This is one of my favorite passages, verse 7, where he says, Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. That's why here at church we say all the time, it's not good enough to listen, to listen to God's word. You know, to come to church and, and to hear a great sermon and say, well, thank you, pastor. That's a great sermon. I appreciate that. I'm going to go home now. Maybe next week you're going to teach me something else. That's not what church is about, and that shouldn't be what parenting is about. It's not enough to listen to what God has to say. We need to, like Moses is saying in verse 7, we need to talk about it. When? When they're on the road, that means regularly in their life. That means when they're going to bed. That means when they're getting up. This is what I do with my kids. We make it a regular habit to talk about Jesus Christ to our kids. We want them to know about who Jesus is and why they can trust him for their salvation. And this is why if you check out our website, we've got all these resources online on that website. We've got series for everyone and for youth and for kids. And all of these things are designed to equip you, to empower you, parents, to do this well, to parent your kids well. And you can't parent your kids well if you don't prioritize God in your home. And in doing so, if you don't talk about it, have, learn. how I know it can be awkward at first, especially if you're a new believer. It can be really hard. How do I do it? How do I talk about it? That's why we've got our resources online. Check those out. Make it a regular thing in your life, especially if your kids are young. Listen, grab their hearts when they're young. Have a family devotional time at least once a week. You know, pour into your kids. Take that kid's guide home. You know, take those workbooks home and talk about it during the week. Don't leave it to your Sunday school teachers to teach them about God. If, if that's all your kids ever learn, then they're never going to be pursuers of God. I really believe that. The ones who are really going to pursue God are the ones where their parents are really putting God first and modeling that and making God a top priority in their home. I challenge you to do that. And there's one more thing we need to understand, and it comes right from Deuteronomy. See, if we get this right, it will leave a legacy for our kids and even for our grandkids. You know, it's really important to understand parents and, and the students and kids that are listening to this, you need to pay attention to this as well. Parents cannot pursue God for their kids. Every individual has to pursue God for himself or herself. Parents, you can't put God first for your kids. You can't make that decision. You can lead them in that. You can make that a priority in your home. You can, you can parent with that as your first, most fundamental principle of parenting. But at the end of the day, and, and parents who, who have uh, teenagers or, or kids who have rebelled against God, you understand this all too well. In fact, this is probably kind of a painful topic for you because it really is true. Parents, you can't pursue God for your kids. All you can do is pursue God for yourself, put God first in your own life, and make that a value in your home, for your family. But at the end of the day, you need to pray and hope that what you've done in raising your kids from 0 to 18, you know, hopefully, that what you've done in raising your kids in that time period leaves a legacy for them that they will bring into 
their future, into their college years, into their young adult years, and even into their own family. And that becomes then a legacy, not just for your kids, but a legacy also for your grandkids. See, here's what the parenting journey looks like. It's kind of funny. Uh, First, as an infant, an infant, their attitude is like this. You help me. You know, that's what an infant does. You know, an infant needs help, and the kid makes no bones about it at that age. Now, once they become a kid, they get a little bit older, then kids, if they could say it, if they had the awareness to say it, they would say, now, mom and dad, now you guide me. You know, they're starting to grow up a little bit. They're starting to mature a little bit more, and, and they, don't, they want to start doing stuff on their own, right? I mean, every kid does that. I remember when my own kids, you know, got to that point where they wanted to tie their own shoes, you know, and it just, it's just more the same as they grow older. Now, now they want to be more and more independent, but, but as a kid, especially in grade school, kids still want guidance, you know. They recognize the need for guidance from their parents. But when they become teenagers and they finally get to that point, they typically say, you back off. You know, their, their heart and their attitude now is, hey, thanks for your help. You know, I hope they would say that. Thanks for your guidance when I was a little kid and I needed it. But now I'm older and I'm a teenager and, and now you just back off. You know, and not every teenager says that. But it's appropriate for parents to learn to back off a little bit. It's appropriate for parents uh, to, to begin to understand the shifting journey of parenthood. You know, that they, that they now need to begin to guide a little bit with a little bit more wisdom. You know, they, they need to guide with, from a little bit more of a distance than they were before as you're guiding them through the teenage years. And, and then the last part of the journey for parenting is, is, of course, when they become an adult finally. And hopefully now if you did a good job and they're an adult, they'll say, Mom and Dad, you did well. You know, this is the time when, when hopefully your kids grow up and they become adult kids and, and now they're parents themselves and they, the journey just sort of cycles over again with your grandkids. And, and now, hopefully, as, as they bring their kids on that journey from, from infant to kid to teen, they're going to say, man, mom and dad, this is hard. You know, I, I didn't realize how much of a legacy you're leaving for me. And you can, parents. You can leave a legacy for your kids and for your grandkids. If you'll remember this first principle that, that we need to put God first in our homes, in our lives, as parents, hopefully in our kids, in their lives. And, and parents, make sure you go through this with your kids or with your teens. Make sure that you talk about this. Use those other two survival guides to make sure that you're starting to have this conversation, how important it is to put God first in your home and in your lives, no matter what your age. But the whole point is so that just like Moses took these guys through this, through this desert, this dry and arid desert, when is this going to stop? When is this journey going to end? Where's the payoff? That promised land is there. Just remember that. That promised land is there. Parents, you can get there if you do it right. You can get there if you put the right things in order, if you prioritize the right things. You can bring your your kids to that place where you're not just surviving as a parent and they're not just surviving as kids, but you're really winning at doing this. And you can do this if you put God first.